Good morning, church. So when my dad told me I'd be preaching this Sunday, I was at first excited that he actually thought I'd be able to pull this off. But later on it hit me, oh man, I actually have to do this. I need to make it good. I mean, preaching is in my genes. So I decided I'd take this opportunity to express myself and really reflect on my experiences of my faith and my high school career as a whole. Tools I've been given now that'll prepare me for my future in college and life beyond that. What have I been given? Like in the scripture it said, from those who much is given, much is expected. A part of the service I always zone off during, but a a message very vital for me making this sermon. Dad, I did not realize how hard your job actually was. What I took away from this message initially was that we're expected as children of God to do what is right because we have been given the resources to act in such a way. However, looking at this message a second time, I realize it's more of an individual concept. Everyone in our daily lives has some sort of impact on us, and this impact is supposed to make us achieve higher and be a better version of ourselves. Recently, I wrote a graduation announcement email to send out to extended family and friends about my many experiences with my four years in high school. It wasn't a typical graduation announcement. It was more of a three-page testament of my accomplishments and what I had done. I got a little carried away. I talked about how coming into Norwalk as a sophomore was rough, and it started out as a difficult transition, but I made it work. I started out lost, confused, and insecure. I didn't really feel comfortable here, and I knew that needed to change. So I got involved with sports, clubs, events, name it, I probably did it. The years attending Norwalk High School were the ones that truly defined who I am today. I was given the gift of adaptability. I mean, moving around a lot, eight times to be exact, I kind of just acquired that trait. With this gift, I'm expected to use it for the good of myself and the good of others. When you're giving something, you need to use it. Whether it's that really ugly shirt your grandma gave you for Christmas, or an opportunity of a lifetime, you need to take it. If I had just sat around and not used my gift these past few years, I would have probably not been speaking up here today. I wouldn't have had the friends I had. I wouldn't have been captain of two sports teams. I wouldn't have been VP of Best Studies. I wouldn't have done a senior independent study, and I wouldn't have been me. Being able to integrate myself and make my personality shine is what I think is expected of me. A lot of times, the teacher will give me an assignment and have guidelines of their expectations, and if we fulfill those, we get an A. But the best teachers are the ones that leave it free and open and don't have all the expectations. They should have already prepared you to be on your own and trust you to be mature enough to get the work done. As far as my church life goes, many of you know I'm a liturgical dancer for the church. Since I've been here, I've counted blessings, walked on water, been given God's eyes to see, readied my heart, been a God, been the only one to know your heart's desire, and I set the world on fire. Going into a dance Sunday, I would always get nervous, but once I got into a certain mindset, I got lost in the lyrics and engrossed in my own little world. I remember texting Nico the nights before these Sundays and say stuff like, I don't want to dance, I look like a big purple grape in my dress, why am I doing this? And he would always be like, you're not a grape, you'll be just fine. And he was always right, I was just fine. Even though I was nervous out of my mind, I always got up and danced because I knew I had been given this gift of expression and I was to share it with the whole church. In a way, I felt like this is what the Lord had required me to do. I've never even took legitimate dance classes and I'm nowhere near a professional dancer, but I love to do it and I love to create something to call my own. I've also been given the gift of awkwardness. I know a lot of times this trait is made out as a bad thing, but it's actually pretty essential. Just like in a sermon my dad had a few weeks ago about humility, awkwardness can go hand in hand with that. I feel awkward in most situations, like right now, (laughs) because I just don't know how to react like many of us feel. But because of this unique feeling, it has made me more humble. This past weekend, I was at my senior prom, and I got crowned prom queen. I felt super awkward getting up there and accepting the honor when I knew so many other women were just as deserving of it. This gift has been given to me, so I had to act in such a way that was expected. I congratulated all the other nominees awkwardly and didn't boast about my accomplishment because I knew how grateful I was for it. Without this gift, I could have been a real jerk and have been overly confident about winning this award. 
In church, it's not so much about the recognition one receives, but the joy that comes from knowing your gifts are being used. We do all things here for the Lord. We lift up our prayers to him every week. We read scriptures to understand his teachings. And we sing and raise our voices of thanksgiving for giving us this wonderful life. If you have a good voice, join the choir. If you can dance, take my place as an interpretive dancer next year, except for you, Dad. If you can cook, <laughs> if you can cook, help with the love feast or coffee hours. If you are creative, decorate the bulletins. If you're handy, fix a pipe. If you're kind-hearted, be a greeter. But don't be anyone but yourself here. That's the beauty of being part of God's family. Everyone's gifts are important. One of my favorite passages in the Bible speaks of, without one body part, the other can't function. If we don't all do what God has planted us on the earth to do, we won't be of that one body. We will all work alone and nothing will be cohesive and essentially the church will crumble. Many hands, feet, and ideas are what make up this church. Everyone's talents flowing out into our FCC on the Green community. We learn from what others have been given and we rely on each other to bring out the best of us, to make us the best church family we can possibly be. Tony has a smile every Sunday as he greets members at the door. He has taught me to be friendlier and to smile at everyone you see, even if they look like they're having a bad day. Ciara has extreme energy and has taught me to live life through a child's eyes. Ricardo has the hugest heart and cares for everyone in this building. He has taught me to be myself and to never change for anyone else. And Nico has determination and strength like no other and has taught me to never give up on my dreams, no matter how hard they may seem to achieve. God has given each one of us gifts, and it is our job to use these gifts to live, out and live life in a humble manner. The gifts of adaptability, expression, and awkwardness are mine. Now it's time to find yours and use it. What have you been given? Amen. And now I'll turn this over to my esteemed colleague and friend, Mika. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. You would think by now I'd be used to talking up here and wouldn't be nervous in front of all of you, but if you could see my knees shaking, you'd know that's not true. The topic Frank and Joe asked us to speak about led me to write an extremely long passage, but a few drafts later I was able to cut it down. I know all of you have heard me ramble on long enough for each of, your, each of your lifetimes. When Frank and Jill asked us to speak today on what our family, friends, and church have given us for our present and future, I immediately heard a certain quote echo within my mind. This quote from Henry David Thoreau reads, go confidently in the direction of your dreams. As many of you know, I graduated high school this past Sunday, and by some odd chance, this quote appeared on a card from my social ethics teacher a card from my great aunt, and on a mug I received from Erica and Ricky, so you'll understand why it remains in the forefront of my mind. I ask that you keep it in mind as I speak, so I'll repeat it once more. Go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Now, what have my friends and family given me for my present and future? The list of intangible gifts that have been bestowed upon me is incredibly lengthy, but I've narrowed the list down to a few things. My friends have given me the gift of relationships, I have met incredible people in my 17 years, especially during my time at Fairfield Prep. The friends I've created have offered me trust, sympathy, advice, and joined me in creating memories I will never forget. I've grown to value the relationships I have, and that is an important gift I have now and in the future. My family has given me gifts that I continue to struggle to describe. One being confidence. At every turn, through every conflict, and there have been many, many conflicts in my life, my family has been standing behind me, propping me up. They have given me endless encouragement to stick to my beliefs and to pursue my dreams. With this encouragement, without this encouragement, without the ability to pursue what I choose, without losing the love of my family, I would not be the confident person I am today. I was given the gift of faith from my great-grandfather. He acted as my mentor during confirmation class, and he acted as the most intelligent teacher and most loving family member at all other times. My great-grandfather gave me lessons of forgiveness, lessons in morality, and lessons in faith. Without these lessons, I would not be the man I am. For all I know, I wouldn't be here on every Sunday, and I'm certain I wouldn't be standing at this podium. My teachers have given me intelligence and direction. They challenged me in preparation for my future. My teachers have offered me new morals, 
and values, new windows from which to view the world. Each of them has had a lasting impact on my life. Each of them has offered me humbling words that inspire me to be the person I am. Direction is a gift that is often, often undervalued, but without that direction, we would all find ourselves lost. And now the church. The church has given me so much. Each and every one of you has touched my life in ways you cannot even imagine. Ricky. I need to thank you, Ricky, not only because I don't think we recognize you enough for all that you do here, but I need to thank you for offering me guidance, friendship, and leadership for so many years. Without Ricky, I would not have become an usher. I would not have, I would not have been able to enjoy my time serving as a deacon. This church has offered me opportunities to excel numerous times through committee memberships, serving on the search committee, serving as a deacon and an usher. More importantly, the church has given me a second family in all of you. I truly enjoy every conversation I have with each of you, inside and outside these doors. I can't call out everyone's name because there are so many of you I'd like to thank. I would like to thank one more person along with Ricky, however. Frank Glick. I want to thank you, Frank, because in you I see my great-grandfather. Each time I speak to you, I can see him speaking back to me. I'm grateful for the friendship I've made with you, Frank. All of, the, all of these gifts, from my teachers, my friends, and my family, and from all of you, have helped me to create the person I am today. Without these influences, I myself would not be the same. In this sense, through the morals, the values, and the worldviews that I have come to hold due to your influence, you have all given me my future. You have helped create someone who wants to use his faith, his intelligence, his confidence, all of which has been given from those around me, to help those less fortunate. Through whatever profession I choose, this will be my goal. This goal allows me to walk humbly with God, doing his work as one of his servants. The gifts you have all given me allow me to live a life in which I am prepared for the day our Savior returns. Because as the scripture read, we know not when the Lord will come. And so it is not he who the Lord finds ill prepared that will be blessed, but it is he who has lived a life that models the Lord that will be blessed. We must not ignore the work that God has prepared us for. While we all have dreams, I personally believe that each of these dreams can be transformed into work that will be able to benefit many, rather than just ourselves. We each have a calling. We each have had gifts given to us as we've grown, that have propelled us to the exact place we are now. But it's our duty in the end to take what we've been given and apply it, to, do, to go confidently in the direction of our dreams, dreams which serve all of God's children's, children, dreams which serve those less fortunate, dreams that spread love, kindness, forgiveness, and equality. Those are the dreams we must move confidently towards. Those are the dreams you have all helped me create. For that gift, for the many gifts, and the relationships and friendships you have all offered me, I can only say three words. Thank you all.